Hey guys, Outdoor Prepper, welcome back to the channel. We've got a lot of equipment on here today, and the reason I'm making this video is I get a lot of questions from friends, from family, from subscribers and viewers. How do I hook up a generator to my house? How do I power things in my house? I, there was just a storm. I went out and I bought this generator at Harbor Freight. I bought this generator at Home Depot. I bought this at Tractor Supply. What do I do though? I just, you know, I brought it home. What do I do? How do I use it? How do I hook it up? That's the real question. So we've got some things out here today, and I, basically what I want to do is I want to show you that there's a lot of ways that you could power your house or things in your house with these generators. And you know, with some of this equipment out here, you don't need a whole house generator. They're great to have, but they're expensive. You're talking twelve, fifteen thousand dollars You need a natural gas hookup or a large propane tank. So you might want something cheaper, like one of these units, or you know, one of the many, many other dozens of units. So Let's just have a look at these and talk about what we're dealing with. Maybe you went out and bought this. This is a Champion generator. Let's start with this one. Uh, you go out to the store, you buy this, and you're like, all right, I brought it home. It's got this weird plug on the front. How do I hook that up? Let's go get the camera, and I'm going to show you the plug here on the front of this unit. And I'm going to show you some options that you have to actually use this. So let's, let's just lower the tripod here. And let's zoom in. So you just pick this up, right? Or something very similar to this. And you've got these strange looking plugs here. So you've got this plug and you've got these two. And you're like, wow, how do I hook this up to my house? What do I do? Uh, we have no power right now. Well, you've got a few options. So these are just your normal duplex outlets, right? So you can take something like this. This is a, uh, this is a power cord reel. Let me just uh, adjust so you can see what I'm talking about here. So you can take a reel, just like this, and you can plug it in. So you're just going to take this plug, you're going to plug it in to your outlet here, and then you're just going to wheel, you know, un undo the cord and bring this into your home. And now once this is inside your home, you can plug in your fridge, you can plug in some lights, you can plug in a phone charger, uh, you can plug in a TV, and you want to stay within the power uh, requirements of your devices and, and what the generator can output so you don't want to overload it but if you're just powering a fridge if you're powering some lights if you're powering your phone charger that's totally okay this is a 120 volt outlet uh, it is 20 amps and it'll show you here on the generator so it says 8 amps and that is for the cigarette lighter right here 20 amps is for this outlet and 30 amps is for this strange looking outlet and I say strange looking because a lot of folks may not know what that is. So, all right, we've established that you can just use the extension cord reel and just plug in your devices. Now maybe you're a little more of an advanced user and you have a transfer switch on your house, but your transfer switch does not have this strange looking outlet. And you're like, what do I do with that? Well, they make adapters. So that outlet is called a TT30 and that's for a travel trailer. So a lot of RVs might have that outlet, uh, you know, recreational equipment. So they sell adapters. This is an adapter. This is made by AC Works. Uh, let's see if there's a model number. There is not, so I will post it uh, in the description. But what this does, and let me get behind the camera so I can really show you. So this adapter here from AC Works has this strange looking plug that fits into that strange looking outlet and then what it does is it gives you this, which is basically an L1430R receptacle. Uh, R is for receptacle. And with this, you can plug it into your transfer switch. Obviously, this is a little short. So you can buy an extension cable, kind of like this right here from Champion. And what this is, is it's just basically a long cable, uh, you know, with this, this end on one end and the corresponding uh, plug right there. And I'll post the link to this as well. This long cable uh, from Champion, this is basically just a generator cable and what that does is it just plugs into a transfer switch. And we'll talk about the transfer switch uh, in just a few moments. I'm gonna get to that as well. So right off the bat, we've established that if you bought this Champion generator or something similar to it, you can just simply plug in your devices or you can use this adapter to power a transfer switch. 
Now there are some limitations on the Champion generator, uh, specifically this one right here, in that this is not 240 volts. So you cannot power a well pump, you cannot power an electric dryer, an electric hot water heater, a, a whole house air conditioner, uh, but they sell generators that can. So if you pick up a generator from the store and the generator has this type of plug on it, then that means that that generator is capable of producing 240 volts and you're good to go. And the way you harness this is you, like I said, you basically need a transfer switch and you need a cable like that to hook up to the transfer switch. All right, let's move on to the next generator. So the next one that you may have potentially gone out and purchased is something small uh, like this unit right here in the middle. So this is a 2500 watt and I did a review on this. So if you have not seen it, check it out. Um, this is a 2500 watt generator and let me just make sure that the camera here can see the front. Let's, uh, let's lower the tripod. So I think this is important that we all kind of see this and understand what this unit can do. So if we're looking at the front of this, right here we're just going to flip this weather protection cover up. We just have two standard outlets again. So right here we can just plug in our extension cord reel or we can just plug in a long extension cord and plug in our fridge. We can plug in a lamp, a phone charger, uh, again whatever it is that you want to power but you have to stay within the power ratings. And this is 120 volts, 20 amps. So if you stay within that you're good to go. And you know maybe you've lost power due to a hurricane and you know you don't need a giant whole house unit. You want something a little bit smaller this might really you know, suffice for you. And let me tell you, to, to all the folks that say, you just need a big generator, you don't need something small, you wanna power your whole house, blah, blah, blah. Well, ask the folks that just got affected by Hurricane Helene how easy it is to go to the gas station. The gas station might have been wiped out. So you want something that's maybe a little bit smaller, that can conserve fuel, that can use a little less fuel because maybe you have to go a week or two weeks before you can actually get fuel. So if you had a large unit that's burning, you know, four gallons an hour, two gallons an hour, you may not want that. You might want a small unit like this little Champion that on a propane tank can run 34 hours. This is also gasoline. This is what's called the dual fuel. So you can run gasoline or propane. This unit right here, that is only gasoline. And this Predator unit, and I did a whole review on that, and I really encourage you to watch that. This is a great unit, I think. That is also dual fuel, and I got 12 hours on a bottle of propane. And that's a much, obviously, much bigger generator can produce double the power of this one. Um, and it also runs on gasoline, and on gasoline, you can get about 18 hours. So let's go take a look at that one as well. All right, coming over here to the front of that Predator. So there's a lot of things on the front here, but really it's all, all the same. All of these generators pretty much have very similar features. So right here, if I flip this up, again, just our standard two outlets, we can use that extension cord reel. We could just plug our devices in and just bring it right into the house. Um, this one, again, happens to have that strange plug. That's a TT30 for travel trailer 30 amp. And we can use that AC Works adapter that I just mentioned and we can plug the adapter into that and then we can plug that into our transfer switch. Um, you know, that basically is all you need. And again, these are three generators. These are not 240 volt generators, but if you bought a 240 volt, you know, it might look just like that one, just a little bit different. Uh, the Predator does make a 240. There's a lot of companies that make 240 and that might be good. You might need one of those, but a lot of folks right now, if you were affected by a hurricane or a bad storm, you would be so grateful just to have the fridge working, a couple of lights, a phone charger, maybe a TV or a radio, maybe a CPAP, and any of these generators can do that for you. And the very easiest way to do that is just simply get an extension cord reel. I picked this reel up at Costco. It was like $29. It's a 50 foot reel and it's, it's a lifesaver. It's an absolute lifesaver. Let's, let's talk about this generator cable a little bit now and I'm going to show you what a transfer switch is and how these generators, well really not that little one, but those two can hook up to the transfer switch and how a larger 
240 volt generator can also hook up to a transfer switch. So we mentioned earlier that if you're going to use a transfer switch, you need a cable. So this, this is just a random generator cable. It's made by Champion. I happen to like Champion, but there's lots of brands that make this cable. And if we're looking at the box, you can see this. If you have a transfer switch, whether it's a, a small like 8 or 10 circuit transfer switch or maybe a whole house transfer switch or just an interlock in your panel, whatever you have, you're going to have a receptacle like this outside your house. And this receptacle is going to be wired into your transfer switch or your circuit breaker panel to provide power you know, from the generator. But you need to be able to plug into this. And the way to do that is with one of these cables. This runs about $60, give or take. It depends where you buy it. Uh, you can buy cheaper ones on Amazon. This is about 60 bucks. And so this plug right here, I'm just going to get it a little closer so you could see. That would plug into your generator if your generator had that plug or that receptacle. If your generator doesn't, you can use an adapter again like this. Let me just bring the adapter over and plug this into the generator and then plug this plug into here and then into the transfer switch. Now I do want to just talk about this plug just for a minute because I get a lot of questions on this. What this plug is doing, this is taking a generator like these two here that only produces 120 volts, does not produce 240, but it's bridging the two hots or the hot to the two legs here. So this plug is kind of tricking the transfer switch to allow you to use both sides of the switch or both legs. But you have to remember, you still cannot power a 240 volt device. Um, so just be aware of that. So let's go over and take a look at a transfer switch. Let's go look at the receptacle. Let's go look at the transfer switch itself and we'll talk a little bit about that. All right, we're over here on the side of the house. Now, before I show you the switch and, and the, uh, the receptacle here, I just want to state for a number of years, we did not have a transfer switch. And so when we had a power outage, we just wheeled the generator out, you know, wheeled it outside, started it up, and we ran extension cords. And we took extension cords and we ran them, you know, through the windows, through the doors, and we powered the fridge, we powered, you know, the lights, the television, and whatever we needed. And that really was very sufficient. But then at some point, I said, you know what, why don't we just install a transfer switch? It'll just make it a little bit easier. I don't need to use all these extension cords because I'm not powering anything that's 240 volts. Our home here has natural gas, hot water, natural gas uh, dryer, uh, natural gas heat. So we don't, we don't have a well pump, so we don't really need any of that. But this right here, this is your inlet for the generator. So the generator would plug, that giant plug would plug right into here. And then this is wired all the way back to the circuit breaker panel. So let's go downstairs. Let's take a quick look at that. All right, we're downstairs now. And this orange wire, this is the wire from that receptacle outside. So the, I ran this wire actually. I, I installed the transfer switch. It was not very difficult. Uh, so this wire comes down here, comes all the way down. And what it does is it goes into the transfer switch. And so this giant wire is from the street. It's from the, the, you know, the pole outside. If this wire were dead, we need another way to feed power into this. And this is that receptacle outside that the generator is plugging into. And this, this is a transfer switch. This is made by Reliance Controls. Uh, it's, this is the ProTran uh, Reliance Controls. And what this is, is this is a 10 circuit transfer switch. This is capable of doing 240, but I don't have any 240 devices on here. So the generators I have outside are capable of powering this. And what happens is, on a normal day like right now, let's use the sunroom for example, these switches are all down. And if you look over here, it says the top is generator, the middle is off, the bottom is line. Line is like street power, you know, coming from the line outside. If we lost power right now, I would plug in the generator to the receptacle. I would start it up, let it come up to speed and warm up for a minute. And then I would come downstairs and I would take this little switch and go from line to generator. And I would do that with all of these circuits. And I would, I've made sure in advance that all of these circuits are able to meet the, the load that the generator can put out, that we're not going to go over the load. So the fridge does not use that much power. The master bedroom is mostly lights and like an alarm clock. 
it's a natural gas oven, so what's really being powered is like the igniter, the light inside, the fan. The basement is mostly lights, the sunroom is television, uh, computer, some lights, a bathroom is lights, GFI, that's actually this outlet right here. Kitchen is mostly lights. Kitchen does have a microwave, does have a toaster. So we can't use both of those at the same time because the generator I have is not powerful enough to do both of those and everything else. So we'll do one at a time. Bedrooms, furnace again, natural gas. So none of this stuff is really gonna take too much power. So this is what a transfer switch looks like. They'd make other options. And basically what you have on the panel is you have like a, two switches right here and you have like a big mechanical interlock. And what that does is it eliminates the need for this. And what you do is you plug the generator in, just like you did before outside to that, that receptacle box. And instead, you come over here and you shut the street power off, and then you turn on the generator power, and the generator basically feeds the whole panel. But, and that's a great thing. The only thing you have to be mindful of is your generator may not have enough power to power the whole panel, so you need to switch certain circuits off and just use use what you need and use what the generator can actually power. So I hope you guys have found this helpful. Uh, certainly ask some questions if you, if you have any and I'll do my best to help you. But like I said, any generator is better than no generator. And even if you have to run some extension cords through the windows or through the doors, you're going to be well ahead of the game than if you had nothing. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe and ask some questions. You know, I know I said, thanks for watching, like, and subscribe, and we're done. But I actually thought of one thing that I did want to mention. So we're back outside real quick. What I do anytime I use the generator, or I, you know, come out and I start it and test it, before I put it away, I have covers for, you know, for all the equipment. I'm just panning here so you can see. I've got covers for them. Uh, I have all the parts uh, that I need to run them. What I like to do, and this might help someone, and I'm going to use this Champion one as an example. So what I like to do before I put the cover on, I put a tarp right there because if I'm using this, there might be like a storm and, or it might be raining and I might need to make a little bit of a shelter with like a table and just kind of put a tarp on a table to kind of, to kind of shield this. So I keep the tarp on here and then I also like to take the cable, this you know funky cable and I put this right on top so that I, I always know where it is. And you know, maybe you guys might find this helpful. Maybe, you know, maybe you do something similar. But what ended up happening was every time I would go to use the generator, I couldn't find the cable. I didn't have a tarp. So now I just put them on there. I take the cover. I just cover it up and I wheel it back in the garage. So every time I need to use this generator, I know that the cable and the tarp are already on top. And with this Predator generator, I do the same thing. I have another one of those cables. I put it on top there. And then this, bring it over to the camera. This is the propane regulator if I'm running on propane. And I do the same thing. I just put it on top. I put the tarp over or the cover over it. And then I put it inside. That way I've always got the necessary pieces of equipment with the unit. Thanks again for watching. Like and subscribe. And I hope this was helpful.